All right, welcome back to the fifth lesson on how to create the game Zigzag in Unity. For this lesson, we're going to be creating our ball controller script, which will change the direction the ball is traveling down the path when the player clicks the screen. So to get started, we want to create this ball controller script. So I'm going to right click in my scripts folder, go to create and then select C sharp script. We can then call this script ball controller and we'll open it up. All right, so first things first, we need to create some variables for this script. And the first variable is going to be an instance of this script. So this is going to be public static ball controller, and then I'm gonna call it instance. The next variable is going to be for holding our rigid body. So this is going to be rigid body, and I'm gonna call it my RB. Next, I'm going to create a public bool called is started. Next will be a public float called current speed, followed by a public bool called is going right. And the last one is going to be a bool called is alive. And I'm going to set this equal to true. Once we have these variables created, the next thing that I'm going to do is initialize my instance variable. And I'm going to do this within the onEnable function. So this is going to be instance equals this. Then in the start function, we can initialize our rigid body variable. So this is going to be my RB equals git component. We're going to look for rigid body parentheses semicolon. Now let's create a new function, which is going to be for moving our ball. And so this is going to be a void function and I'm going to call it move ball. Then inside this function, the first thing that we want to do is check for which direction our ball is traveling. And so I'm going to type if is going right. If this variable is true, then we want to set the velocity of our ball to be the current speed going in the right direction. And so I'm going to type my RB dot velocity equals, and since it's always going to be the same direction, we can just use world space. And so I'm going to type vector three dot right multiplied times current speed. And then outside these parentheses, I'm going to type plus physics dot gravity. We then want to add an else statement for if we're not going in the right direction. Inside the else statement, we're going to type the same line. So my RB dot velocity equals and then vector three. But instead of dot right, we're going to use dot forward. We then want to multiply this by current speed and we're going to add physics dot gravity. Now we need to call this function and we'll call it within the update function, but we only want to move the ball if our is started and our is alive variables are both true. And so I'm going to type if is started and is alive. And then inside this if statement, we can type move ball. Now let's go ahead and save this script and go back to Unity. Once back inside Unity, we can select our player ball object and then drag our ball controller script onto this object in the inspector. Now you'll need to set the current speed to something other than zero, so I'm going to set it to five. Now we're not quite done yet because we still need to add in some input controls for our player to tell the ball controller script to start rolling. And to do this, I'm going to use one UI button. So I'm going to go to the Create drop-down menu in our Hierarchy window, go to UI, and select Button. This will create both our Canvas object, our Button object, and the Event System object. Now we can rename our Button object to be something like Action Button. And then I'm going to full screen this button by setting the anchor points to the corners, and then zeroing out the Rec Transform. We can then reduce the alpha channel of our image component to be mostly transparent, if not completely transparent. 
And finally, I'm going to delete the text object that comes with the default button. This is kind of an easy way to get a general screen tap input from the player. And what's nice about this is you can overlay other UI elements on top of this button. And if you click those elements, it won't click this button. But now that we have this button, we need to create a function to pair to this button. So I'm going to create a new script and we can rename this script to something like menu controller. And then let's open up this script. Inside this script, the only thing that we need to do right now is create one public void function called turn button. Inside this function, the first thing that we want to do is check to see if our game has started. And so I'm going to type if exclamation mark ball controller dot instance dot is started. So this is checking for if it's false, which means our game has not started. We then want to start our game. So I'm going to type ball controller dot instance dot is started equals true. Then outside this if statement, the next thing that we want to do is add one line of code to flip the value of the is going right variable from our ball controller script. So I'm going to type ball controller dot instance dot is going right equals not ball controller dot instance dot is going right. So if the is going right variable is equal to true, this exclamation mark will flip it to false and then resave it into the same variable. And if it's false, then it'll become true. So now let's save this script and go back to Unity. Once it's compiled, we can then select the canvas object and drag on our menu controller script to the inspector. We then want to select our action button and we'll scroll down to the button component and we'll add an on-click event. We'll then need to drag in the canvas here and then use the drop-down menu to go to menu controller and select turn button. So here you can see we have our procedurally generated path and our ball and when I left click anywhere within my game view you can see the ball begins rolling and our platforms fall after our ball rolls over the platform. And we can just keep going Keep going. Whoa, it's getting hard. I'm almost there. Ah, now I can't see. Ah. So there we go. We now have the basic controls for our ball. Now in the next lesson, I'll show you how to make the camera constantly follow the ball. This will make it so that we can keep playing our game and our ball won't roll outside our game view.